Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Today, I'm going to show you how to do free motion quilting. This is part two, as I did show what you see stitched on this on last Saturday. And I'm going to go into a little bit more of the basics for you today, show you something. This is what I usually do at a show. I'll demonstrate on, on fabric, and it's, it looks really messy right now. I hope when I switch cameras, it works again. I'm going to switch to the close-up camera really quick, and we'll, we'll do some more technical checking here and see if I am still sounding okay. This is something that I made before on my mouse pad. This is definitely not normally something I have in my... What do you... What, Michelle? I'm just saying it's still not letting me respond. I know, but you can talk. Okay. You can tell me what they're saying. Okay, perfect. And then I can answer them verbally. And uh, last time I went live, I was telling someone that I, or someone said they had arthritis and they asked if they could use the Octavius for, even though they had arthritis. And I answered her on the screen, but she didn't know I was answering her. So that is how I'll be doing it instead of typing words. And I can kind of see. So. Hi, Judy. Oh, hi, Judy. I know who you are. And see, so your names are showing up. That means that's good. I, I can remember who you are, but sorry, you can't see me right now. Anyway, so I'm going to take off the regular presser foot. And this is the foot I was using yesterday when I went live on another group. And I apparently had, I had audio problems for a good part of it. So I apologize if any of you were watching. If any of you were watching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And I was on the Quilt Craft and Sewing Festival's Facebook page showing how to make a cell phone purse. It's hello from Massachusetts. And they want to know, they want you to tell them about the giveaway again. The giveaway is one of my wooden pressers. We have a wide variety of different color options. These are tools that eliminate the need to iron. I designed them with an ergonomic shape so that they don't hurt your hand, your finger rest within that groove and you just push down and kind of erase on your fabric. This fabric. Yeah, will help you understand better. So a piece of fabric and there's there's no crease at all. And you just take and you fold your fabric and just draw. And it's this edge right here that actually does the pressing. So we're not rubbing like that. You use this edge and hand down on the table and then slide across like that. And then you can see how perfect that crease is. And this is actually more precise than using an iron first. They come in different color options. The lighting is kind of different today. Oh, but I didn't have this one. That'll be better. The reason I'm a little slower is because I set up Michelle <laughs> so that she could be on screen with you guys. So we got, uh, all right. Judy hey. says good. That's one of the few items that you sell that, you, that she doesn't have. Judy, you don't have one. How did you do that? How did you not get a presser? Because she took my class on the babbling book. And I'll put this keyboard away. Hopefully I won't need it. You can use the octahoops to, I'm going to switch back to the other camera because I'm going to be doing show and tell. I'm going to start off with a little bit of show and tell. And hopefully the sound will be good still. Okay. So this is a quilted bag and I turned it into a makeup bag. You can learn how to do this on the YouTube channel. It's one of the videos that I have stored on there. I may have it stored also in my group as well. And it sounds still good now that I've switched cameras. I think if it weren't, people would be yelling at me. So this is a really great, great way of learning free motion quilting without being all stressed out because you're making a big giant quilt. Instead, you're making a little teeny project and you could always just put dog bones inside for your dog. You know, it doesn't have to be something important. And that way when you go and you practice and you create something that's this messy, it's just, it's, oops, sorry, I bounced on the microphone. It's just fun instead of stressful. 
after you get good, you can actually follow patterns that are printed out on paper and you trace onto your fabric before you put your batting and backing on. And this is one of my patterns. Give me a thumbs up if you want me to teach this. And this is in my school. I would have you guys join and we'll do a whole quilt. I have a whole quilt of designs that are a little bit different than the normal uh, feathers that are shaped like that, as you can see. Isn't that pretty? You guys like it? They have a black thread on it. I have a black thread on it. Oh, it's probably ink. <laughs> this was a show sample. You can actually quilt through one, two, three, four layers of batting and the back and the top with the octa hoops without a foot. So if any of you have not seen the octa hoops before, you're probably going, this, this person's crazy. Why is she not, not using a foot? Because the foot blocks your view and you can't see through the foot. So that makes it hard to follow patterns normally. Another thing that I use the octaves for is to a quilt fabric that I'm going to use in stockings. And when I do that, I don't back the fabric. And that's the technique I'm using today. So there's no, nothing on the back. I'm going to quilt with just the top and the batting. And so you can then turn this into anything that you want afterward. And people will look inside of your object and there's no stitching and wonder, well, how'd you quilt through that? It's a, a really nice way of learning free motion without the stress. This is a the Babbling Brook course that you can take inside of my online school, create.clairerowley.com. And I will type that in the description below after we're done filming. So this is a, this is kind of what we're doing today. This is another take on it. And the inking process, there's videos in my YouTube channel on how to do the inking process. If you don't want to follow a pattern like that and you, you just want to quilt, you can actually just quilt your squares and do pebbles or anything that you like. And this is also another video that you can watch on our YouTube channel. There's lots of content already. So this is more of a live session. And I am here to answer questions that you may have. This one is going to, I'm going to start with this and see how it does have a back on it. Because I'm going to actually, my eyes twitching. Wink, wink. Okay. How do you attach the backing after quilting? So you would leave out some of the stitching. And if you plan ahead and know which one you're going to leave for after, then you do all of the real heavy sewing and then you put your back on and then you would go in and only quilt just the, uh, the leaves. And who said that? Is there a name? I, no, it says T J O H R I. So if, ever, if there's ever a name, let me know in a second. Say right, name. right. Because I like to say your names on here. And better days gave you thumbs up. Better days. So here we have, um, three frames in the kit. So when you purchase the Octa you, you get all three. And when we quilt, we're going to use two of them. Some people will think, well, I want to use the biggest one on top because a quilt is big and we want to cover a lot of area. However, when we work with the octa hoops, we, we don't move our hands like this. We actually hold on to a writing instrument of sorts. I don't have any handles. Where's my handles? Here we go. I was organized and put them away. If you ever lose your one of your Octahoop handles, we sell them on our website. You, you'll find them on the Octahoop page. There's an options link, and you just click on options, and, and it pulls down, and then you have the option to buy the handles. Better just, days is Amy. Just <laughs> better days is Amy. So if you ever, if you guys join StreamYard, next time you come in, you'll be able to uh, actually, I will see your name and your picture if you want. Those of you watching on YouTube, hi YouTube viewers, I'm so happy to be able to go live easily with you now. And I know that I've been neglectful of my YouTube fans, so sorry for that. I'm going to be more active, and I'm thinking that we're going to start going live every Thursday at 2. So it'll be a consistent show, and uh, hopefully I'll get better every week. 
And then I will also have regular videos uploaded in addition to that. And the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to film the cell phone first video that we tried doing yesterday and the sound was really bad. So if you missed the live, um, cell phone purse video that I did yesterday and or watched it and was frustrated with the sound. It will be a recorded video, so it'll be we'll we won't have any mistakes. This is my washi tape. The uh, uh her name is Tina, the one that was asking about how to attach the back. Oh, oh, her name's oh, Tina and it's with TJ. Okay, so hi Tina. And because my my chat or my comments thing is not feeding, so I don't know. If any new ones come in. What's different about the OctaHoops than any other free motion system is first, there's there's no clamps or screws, so they don't attach to anything. And we have holes on all eight sides of the octagon, and every one of the frames has these holes. The holes don't go all the way through, and they're designed for these handles to drop in, and you can see that they stay in the hoop. That's important because if if you had to hold your handle and keep it in the hole. You would be using, ten, getting these muscles across the top of your hand tense. It's the same thing that happens when you use scissors for a long period of time and why um, we offer scissors for, to stop you from having injury to your hand. Here they are. This is another, we have a lot of uh, products on our site for, to keep you from injuring yourself. Or if you've already done some damage to yourself or, or suffer from arthritis, these are awesome scissors. They are designed by Rosa from Appliquick. And uh, she's a company in Spain. So if you've gone to shows and seen her, she's fabulous. And oh, we have all of her products at creativefeet.com. She, uh, she says hi from Spain. She's missing the shows as uh, we all are not able to travel internationally right now. So the octahoops fit one another in that they're the same shape. When you bring one corner of one frame to the corner of the other, they move together. If not, they move separate. They're not connected. So it seems really weird that we're going to be able to quilt with them, but we are going to take the two frames and it's two smaller frames to decide which one to use on top is based on the size of your hand. If your hand is smaller than the medium frame, then you should use the, the smaller frame on top and the medium on the bottom. If your hand is does reach the perimeter of this, then you can use the big one on the bottom and the medium one on top. And the reason for that is that when you quilt with this, you're not going to be lifting your elbows. You're going to be putting your elbows down and drawing with your fingers. So your fingers aren't as long as this medium frame, but you can actually move your fingers all, or just move your fingers only and cover the entire circumference of the inside of the small frame. And, and that may sound really weird to you right now, but as we go on, it will make more sense. You get two handles in the kit. Somebody is asking, um, do they want want them to monitor through Facebook or through YouTube? She had both pulled up as you started. All right. Is this is this who I think it is? Is this Francine? No, Francine said hello, and she says she's got handles on the website sold separately. Exclamation point. Francine, John. Yeah, some. Francine, I'll call you, and we'll get everything that you want, all your extra stuff figured out. And the um, if you want to help monitor, you're more than welcome to do that. If you if you know the answer because you've been following me a long time and you want to help, I, I would be very grateful for you to do that. Know that I am going to go through the comments afterward and I will answer any of you. And if I'm missing your posts and not able to say hi, know that I love all of you and I miss you so much. I miss seeing you at shows. So we're going to get, uh, get to know each other better this way. And I have my, my school as well. And when we go live in my school, we go on Zoom. And then you all get up on the screen. Well, some of you show yourself. You don't have to go on camera, but if you want to, you can get to know each other really, really nicely there. So this is how it works. We're going to go ahead now and take the bottom frame is going to go beneath. And you'll, you'll see sometimes it just falls off the top. It doesn't seem as though you'd be able to quilt that way. 
But when when the frames start to drop off the machine, you put your hand underneath the frame and you become like an extension of the sewing machine. In the beginning, you'll be trying to learn and you'll be thinking a lot. And after a while, you will actually stop thinking. In order to get yourself to stop thinking, you can do things like sing while you're quilting or put on a movie that you've watched a lot. My favorite movie to do that is Under the Tuscan Sun. And I listen to the movie and I've watched it so many times I can see the scenes. And then that just kind of takes you out of your actual reality and you start just having fun. It, it, it really works because uh, sometimes you just think too, we, we think too much. This frame goes beneath, this frame goes on top, and then when we drop the handle in there, nothing happens. It doesn't move. The only way this is going to move is if you bring the corner of the bottom one and the corner of the top one together, and then the whole quilt moves. So even though there's nothing holding these fabrics together, and nothing is connected to anything, they all move together by simply bringing that corner together. It's, it's almost magic. And then you can put your hand on the frame beneath it because we're going to actually rest our whole body. Normally when you do free motion, you're in this position, elbows up and moving like that. And when you do that, all of you right now, you're sitting down at home, lift up your arms and tell me if you sit perfectly still. You can gauge this by taking a pen and holding a pen in your hand and lifting your elbows and see if you can center your pen over something and stay steady. And you'll see that you actually sway. And that is why a lot of people have trouble sewing straight. So even just with a regular foot, elbows down, and now you're anchored with the planet and you can sew straighter. So who is the one that offered to moder monitor? Uh, it just says Facebook showing. user. D N. So your name isn't showing up, so I don't know. I and don't Francine, know. So I trust you. Francine mm -hmm. made a comment right before that. Yeah, I know Francine. Right, and maybe she was her. the one that offered that. She was. She was, said I would moderate or monitor. Well, we'll have to figure it all out. You know, this is only the second time I'm going live with with Streamyard. So you can actually draw straight lines if you can draw a straight line on a piece of paper. I'm probably going to need to now switch to the other camera so that you guys can see up close. <laughs> and I'm not used to having a mouse at my sewing machine. So getting the hang of this. I'm so glad the sound is fixed. Yep, Francine, as Claire, as Claire thought. <laughs> it wasn't. Francine had no idea that the Babbling Brook class was 110 hours of video. So because we spent 110 hours together. Yes, we did. So here we go. So this is a bad color choice. You can barely see it. This is our, our Wonder Fill and Visifill thread. This is a 100 weight polyester thread that's cottonized. So it doesn't shine like this. This is a polyester. This is a 40 weight. If you go to our site, it's polyfast. So if you want your thread to really show, you use a thicker thread. If you want your thread to not show, you use a thinner thread. And the bobbin that I'm using, as I mentioned on Saturday, is this new line of thread. It's called Deco Bob. And don't mistake the name for only being used in the bobbin. You can actually use this, sorry for the noise. It's, a, it's got a beautiful sheen to it, but it, like the Invisifil, is muted. So when you quilt with it, it's gonna show up a little bit more, but it's still not gonna shine. It's not gonna look like embroidery. It's gonna look like cotton thread, but it's not. And why do we want polyester versus cotton? Well, cotton is a living, organism that has died and anything that was alive and dies begins to what? It begins to rot. Wither away. Rots and decays. All right. So I'm going to just show you a little bit more on this. So if you want to practice, I always practice before I go to my my actual project. And you do this just like if you were going to go for a run and you wanted to exercise or warm up your muscles before running so you don't pull a muscle. Definitely want to take the time to warm up before 
going to your more expensive fabric. But always practice with a good quality thread and the correct needle. Needles are very important. Uh, we had a, a um, Zoom lesson the other day. I don't know if any of you were in the Zoom lesson. We talked about needles and thread. And so you can see how I can just, I can actually go off the quilt. Oh, look. Oh, what is that? What are those? Aren't those supposed to be down? And oh no, she's going to go back up. Oh, I can go back up. I can dance along the edge of my quilt. There's nothing like the octahoops. Why can we do this? Because there's no foot. The octahoops are, in essence, a foot. The foot is designed to hold the fabric down for you, and that eliminates the need for actually having me put on. I'm going to switch to my actual project now because you can't barely see this. Francine says, but the voice with you today is fabulous, a real keeper, even if we haven't been introduced. Oh. <laughs> Shall we introduce you again? Francine I'm didn't good. get to hear you. She likes your voice. She has a beautiful voice, and don't get her laughing because <laughs> everybody can't stop laughing when she starts laughing. She's got one of those belly laughs that makes you... Uh, Peter Pants. <laughs> yeah, run to the bathroom. <laughs> so here we have, and Michelle has uh, been working with me on and off for 2008, February. Since 2008. So we'll say hi. And now Terry, get in there. Bye. And there's Terry. <laughs> so we're all here together, hanging out. And uh, I'm going to go and switch back. There we go. And ta-da! See how much work I just did? You guys missed it. No, this I sewed this on on Saturday. And you can see how I have this texture in the middle. That is just sewing pebbles. And the way you sew the pebbles, I'll keep, I'll keep showing the handles. Oh yeah. This is what you how you sew the pebble. But of course it's in the frame. But you go circle, circle. So you go around twice and then circle, circle, and then circle, circle. And that is how you maintain or create pebbles. And in this situation, I made all the pebbles almost the same size. So as I would quilt with this, I would have the handle in here and go circle, circle. So it's the same movement. So for you, why does it not move? Remember, this one, the bigger one, goes underneath. Uh-oh, make sure there's no fabric laying underneath your quilt or you'll stitch it to your quilt. How many of you have done that before? Have you ever like sewed a, a shirt and sewed the sleeve to the inside of your shirt and had to take it all out? Thumbs up if you had to do that. Better Days Amy, she's asking a question. She says, um, but the fabric is cotton. So if the cotton thread rots, won't the fabric rot with it? Okay, so a long, long time ago, a friend of mine, she's a fabulous quilter. She wrote a book, and she designed this quilt. It was a beautiful, beautiful quilt. And uh, I'll go on my other camera while I talk about this, because it's a story you all need to hear. Okay. My friend was the best quilter. Everybody wanted her book. Everybody, I can't tell you her name. She made me promise never to tell you who she is. Because she's the one that started telling everyone that polyester thread cuts cotton fabric. And and so people think that seams, they actually thought that the seam allowances, that the thread and the fabric are not, you know, rotting at the same rate. And, and that the polyester thread is just too strong for the poor, weak, little cotton fabric. And that is what makes... Your antique quilts, all the seams were like shredding, but really it's not what happened because polyester thread wasn't even invented or released until 1978. So the only quilt that could have been used on the quilts that are all falling apart at the seams is cotton or silk. And those were the only threads available until rayon came out. And then after that, well, then we got nylon and polyester. They both released about the same time from a comp from DuPont. And uh, so it's a long story, and we're not we're not going to talk all about that right now. But cotton fabric, as any woven fabric, has a quality to it called memory. So when you stretch the fabric, it stretches out, and then it comes back to its original shape. And what's happening is these fibers are able to move, and that keeps it from tearing. 
the polyester thread and the cotton threads, they don't stretch, but the fabric moves away from them. So as the fabric moves, the, the thread doesn't saw its way through it. What caused all your quilts to fall apart before 1980 was a sharp needle. So if you've been told to use a sharp needle to sew straighter seams, you're actually cutting your fabric. A universal needle is your better option for piecing. And uh, I like the Schmetz line of needles because I'm a sewing machine mechanic as well. And, and they've been, uh, we have this little device that shows whether or not your needle is straight to determine if you have a straight needle before adjusting the needle to hook clearance. And I can get really technical if I'm not careful. So um, the universal needle is the first needle to have a rounded tip called a light ball point back in the day. Now they call it the rounded tip needle. And what it does is instead of cutting through the fibers as the machine sews, it moves the fibers aside and protects them from tearing. When you put a quilt on your bed after you sew all these pieces together, somebody's going to sit on that quilt and the fabric will stretch across the bias like this. And if you use a sharp needle, the fabric will start tearing. And I'm really sorry if you were taught to use a sharp needle for for that. I, I will not ever tell you to use a sharp needle on anything that will ever be sat on or worn or stretched. So if you're making a wall hanging and no one's ever going to stretch it and sit on it, you don't have to worry about what needle you use. Otherwise, you want to make sure you're always using a rounded tip needle. So I don't know if any questions came up while I was talking about that. In my book that I wrote for the creative feet, I tell you what needle size and style of needle at, through every one of the techniques so you don't have to learn it. But I will be having an extensive course inside of Create with Claire Rowley, which is found at create.clairowley.com. You can also find it under the link on our creative feet site is classes at the top of our page and join my school. The school is free to join, but there are courses that cost money inside of it, and that is so I can stay in business. So here we go. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up and switch to the close-up camera. I have this wonderful thing that lets me just switch it with a button, but I haven't programmed it yet. So we're going to get better and better at going live. Right, Michelle? Right, maybe Thanks, next time, next time I'll be able to comment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yes, your cotton fabric will decay, it will rot. At some point, it's going to disappear. And um, better days. That's Amy. That's Amy. Mm -hmm. Michelle will never forget. She's great with names. I'm I struggle with names. So I'm using not a universal needle, but the super universal needle. And the super universal needle was really designed for free motion embroidery. Uh, it, it has a Teflon coating on it and it doesn't stick to adhesives. So it's better for any time you're working with an adhesive product. But it also turns out to be the best needle I've ever used for free motion quilting. So I, I will always use the super universal for it. Here I have, uh, I did this flower with yellow around the petals and I have some of the ground of you in here. So I have like a purple thread and I know Francine knows the name of the color. Something purple. Maybe Francine can say what name that is. It's the number 726 and this is in the Invisible line and it's a perfect color for shadows when you're doing fiber art. Fiber art is uh, another term for free motion quilting where you do inking like this. I brought my bobbin thread up through the fabric and then you hold your finger down on the thread just for a few stitches and then you cut your your needle and bobbin thread and then if you switch colors as you proceed don't cut your bobbin thread and you'll stay connected to the quilt. You only have to, to you don't have to keep tying or bringing that bobbin thread up. In fact you can't bring it back up unless you cut it. So now I'm going to uh, work within the shadows here doing a pebble shape. Going around and you can't really see it. I'm trying to do a really good job of this, not use threads that you can see well, but actually show you how I'm, because I really like the artwork and I want to hang it on the wall. Or I'm probably going to hang it on the wall. I don't know. You guys can tell me. What should I use this for? Should I make a pillow? 
should I ink more fabric and make a quilt and have this be like the center on the quilt? I need, I need your help. I need, I really do. I need to know what to do with this because I'm an artist and I have, you can ask Michelle, I have art everywhere. So there's not a whole lot of wall space left. And I don't think I want to put this away. I love sunflowers and I wish they could stay alive longer. And now I will have them always living on my wall or should it be a pillow? Donna's uh, responding from California. She says, good afternoon from California. Hi, Donna. And she says, making a small 7 by 5 needle book for my small hand needles, quilting the top with free motion, having a hard time using the, your hoops. Can you show how you can quilt on small items? Would appreciate it. Oh, Thank you. Yes. Love watching your demos. Okay, so whenever you have something really little, don't cut it out until after you've quilted. She says she's making a beautiful bag. That's the secret to, to doing this. So if you... That's a, good, that's a good question. I was actually going to bring that up yesterday. So if you if you want to make a bunch of... I'm going to have to switch to the other camera. This camera's too tight. I love it when a good question comes up that I... I got to switch cameras. Because if you know you know me, you know I can really talk like da 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 all day long. Donna mm -hmm. says it would make a beautiful bag, your flowers. Yes. But then we're homebound now. <laughs> so where would I use it? Okay. Let's see. So here we, if you picture this as, especially if you're going to make a whole bunch of them, picture this as just one big solid piece of fabric and you're going to make them into a, a bunch of bags. So this would be a bag, this would be a bag. And in, instead of, instead of actually cutting them and then quilting them, draw, you can use chalk or friction pins and just draw the boundaries of the item you're going to quilt and then quilt it before you cut it. If it's too small. And I, I did that when I made placemats or little, um, pot holders, but I use them for my cups and they're like, they're, they're like cup, what are they called? Coasters. And I don't know if you want to get one out of the other room and bring it in so they can see. Francine says not to interrupt, but it's magic. magic. <coughs> She, she said, said what? It's purple magic. Purple, purple magic. It's a, a great, great name for, for, for a thread. thread. That's, That's the, the color, color that works really good for shadows when doing fiber art. It's also just great mid-tone thread, and I also really like the the khaki color for uh, lots of mid-tone colors. It blends in nicely. That's what you saw on the bobbin, and I do tend to use this thread a lot in the bobbin. Deco bob can be used in the needle and the bobbin, but deco bob can also be used just in the bobbin for all of your polyester weights from 100 80 up and then up to the thicker 40 weight thread. And the back of this thing looks great. <coughs> Excuse me. Too much talking, none. Okay, we're so I did, I did a whole bunch of pieced a whole bunch of things together and then I wanted to and quilt them I'll, and I'll, 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 I'll get a close up okay. I quilt all, all around the pattern, the pattern of the of fabric, fabric and then you'll see I I do not have the quilting on the back. back. I quilted with the batting only and, and then, then I put the back, back on afterward, afterward and then I did the stitch. So, so there's, there's not, not a whole lot of that on the back side. It just has a nice look. But before I quilted these I didn't cut them. I pieced them all together and I laid them all on the batting simultaneously. So you, if you do quilt them, or if you, you have already cut them, you haven't put the, the fabric on the batting yet, you just lay them all on one piece of batting. And you can straight stitch around the object or, better yet, use my liquid-based glue and glue and, and you don't, don't need a lot of this because remember, it's not really a glue, it's water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. It's a liquid 
water soluble stabilizer. This is what happens when you get water soluble stabilizer wet, it turns into this. And when this dries, it turns into water soluble stabilizer. Echoes back. Echoes back? Really? Is that better? So this may be internet issue. So I didn't change anything. I did cough and I turned my mic down. And then I turned it back. So is it echoing now? Echo. Um, I'm making a joke. And it's not funny. So you did something before my Michelle. Yeah, you did it. I did the echo thing. Maybe that's in the back. Hello. 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 I'm going to change the mic again for turn off my mic and turn back on because I have no mask. You can talk Tina thinks that the sunflowers would make a beautiful pillow or wall hanging. Is she the only one talking? Amy, her, Amy, Tina, and uh, Francine and Donna also had. And Donna said, "Well, that makes sense. Thank you for answering my question regarding." The uh, hello, <laughs> so that be that's not the mic. Did my eyesight work better? I haven't got any, I don't have any comments yet on it. Hello, hello, is the echo still there, you guys? Or how about if there's no echo, give us a thumbs up. Donna wrote a lot. Is there anything in there that I missed? No, she's doing. Uh, can you show how you quilt on the small items? Oh, okay. she said it made perfect sense. What you said. So everybody understand that? So you, you can, can cut a bunch of different, different things out to quilt, lay them on one piece of batting, glue them down to the batting, and and then it's then it's like a big piece and much easier. Hi, Hi Brenda from Kentucky. Welcome, Welcome to the show. This will be a show every two, every Thursday at 2, now that I'm set up, and hopefully next Thursday there will not be any microphone issues. Nobody is telling me whether or not they're having stuff if I have an echo. Okay, so back to the quilting. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm going to switch cameras and... Is that another? Jerry, uh, Jerry says hello from Alaska. Hi, how cold is it in Alaska, Jerry? It's pretty cold here right now, and he'll just laugh at me. Oh, that's not cold. Yes, yeah, still an echo. Can you please just, uh, I w this is when I wish I was, I dream of you. No more, no more echo. I haven't done anything to. Changing. I believe this would be Francine again. She says, thank you for the needle information regarding the sharp, Sharps cutting fiber. I'll be getting new Schmidt's needles with the titanium coating. Love your channel and your hoops. Thank you, Francine. Jerry says it's 10 below zero. Oh, above zero. I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> 10 above? Well, that's, Brent, than 10 below. Rabbit, that's what the first thing that came out of mouth, my mouth. Does, you Does your phone have volume? It's question mark. It's not on the phone. Is uh, the internet computer? Yeah, my, my computer is off. The sound is off. The only thing I can think of is one of the cameras might be like going, trying to use that mic, but it shouldn't be. Is there still an echo? Because I could just, you know, say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, then I, I come, come back on. But the hoops need to come on is Janet. 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 Hi, Janet. That's why I said maybe it would have been. I'm going to just go for a little while. 
and is, is, my, is Michelle's microphone good? Maybe, Maybe that's, that's what it is. We're, we're in the same, same room. room. And, and we're both talking. No, no, no. Yeah. But, but you, you can understand. understand. I'm, I'm trying, trying to. Let's see. Yeah. I'll mute myself. Yeah. So Michelle is now muted. Is the echo still there when Michelle is muted? Yesterday was so much worse because I was also rushing. So I was rushing and I was echoing. At least today I'm more relaxed. It's better. It's better. Okay. So let's just not have yours on right now. And uh, is the echo completely gone? Yay, it is. <laughs> Apparently, that was it. <laughs> I've never had anyone in the room with their own microphone on before. So, but that was not the case yesterday. So, I think there's little gremlins inside of the computer going, "Let's make live not be fun." <laughs> Cuz it could be it could be so much fun to go live if there was never a problem. <laughs> and I'm going to change thread color because I, I know you guys can't see it and it's more exciting when you can. Tiny bit of static. Maybe the sewing machine is conflicting with the microphone. We'll get it a little higher. Is that better? Aloha from Hawaii. Hi. I recognize I recognize your name, but I don't know your real name. Creative Grammy. I know that I think I've seen your email address before. So I'm going to cut my thread. Remember, if you don't cut your bobbin thread, you know, cut only your needle thread, you don't have to uh, bring up your bobbin thread again. You always have to raise the presser foot. If you don't raise the foot, the tension discs are closed on the thread. When you raise the presser foot, the tension discs open, allowing you to pull the thread out. When doing free motion and not having a foot on the machine, you can tend to forget to raise and lower the foot when threading and removing or, or when unthreading or threading your machine. Let's see. What color should I use? You know, we'll go for the yellow. Or maybe a gold. No, we'll do it yellow. I'm going with a 40 weight thread now so you can see it more. And those of you who don't know that the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. I'm also getting some more thread in this week. I'm super excited. I'm going to be showing you something new. There's a thread company you guys may have seen it shows the uh, YLI thread company. They have a bunch of different threads and I had a meeting with the owner on the phone the other day and he sent me an email and he, go, he gave me a tracking number because he was supposed to send me threads like a month ago, but he, he sent me the tracking number. And we are about to have our lingerie thread back again. Thank God, yes. <laughs> thank you God, thank you God. Okay, and that is uh, American made thread. And he's gonna be buying it from, through us as well. So he'll have it as well, but we're the ones that started the lingerie thread being sold in many Kings and it's been too many it's been years and because i lost track of who made the thread and we tried other companies and of course china does not do a good job with lingerie th thread so you're gonna love it and it's a great bobbin thread have any of you had trouble sewing with a shoe on i'm taking my shoe off i cannot sew with, with my shoe on my can't find my foot control i sew at shows if you saw me at a show most of the time my shoe was off underneath the table <laughs> so here we go and oh i forgot all that time my feed dogs have been up so, so for those of you who think you have to raise or lower your feed dogs to do free motion you don't in fact if i let go right now and i run the machine see how the fabric doesn't go anywhere so when you are doing free motion whether the feed dogs are up or down you are the feed dogs the feed dogs are designed to move the fabric. So I'm wanting to go onto this next pedal and it's so close to the frame that I would hit it. So I stop and you just pull 
the bottom frame toward you and then you pull the top frame towards you and that's it that's how you progress across the top that's why it doesn't matter how small the frame is on top because you're not quilting i lost my train of thought <laughs> because you're because you're not attached to anything even though it all moves together simultaneously no puckers can ever happen because there's no foot Bad. Yeah. Oh, and another thing you can do is control your speed by changing your speed control on your machine. Go down about thirty percent from the fastest speed, and then you you're you can push your foot all the way down, and then you're not thinking about how hard you're pushing on the pedal. I wish there was no echo. I know, but it's just not going to be. I'll just give all kinds of comments. I'll get some thumbs down on, on YouTube. And that, oh, I just don't like that. We have a really high thumbs up rating. And uh, oh, well, this is live. And it's so much fun to, to sew with you guys. A lot more fun than sewing all by myself. So I'm going to go up. See how you can just, so I'm going to doodle over here. It's just, it's really, really easy once you stop trying to do it. So you guys got to just like not try to quilt. Just quilt. And I got to remember, I'm trying to do a really good job on this. So otherwise I would just randomly just start quilting all around. So I'm going to tie a little knot and I'm going to cut once again, lift the foot and pull the thread toward me. Yes, this is the invisible foot. Lift the foot. <laughs> <laughs> Raise the foot. Raise the foot bar, the presser foot bar, because there is no foot. Now, if I start sewing without lowering the foot, without bringing that back down, my tension discs are open, and you'll end up with a thread falling to the bottom, and it's called a bird's nest. What? You don't want that. We don't want that, yeah. If you're going to talk, talk loud enough so they can hear you. Or, yeah, that's, that's right. Your mic's off over there. And I just moved the fabric from here to there. That means my bobbin thread has been drugged from there to there. So I'm going to have a, what's called a carryover stitch on the bottom. And uh, so later on, I'll have to go and cut it. If there are things on the bed of your machine that might get caught, you might want to you might want to actually stop and go under there and cut it now. But I I don't generally have any problems being lazy with my bobbin thread. Another thing I'm going to do now is I'm now going to officially lower my feed dogs. That whole time I was quilting with them up, so now you can see that it does not matter. Now I'm just going around these little petals. And this is not embroidery. This is quilting, so you don't want to cover up too much. I'm going to go one complete circle around the center. Tie a knot. I'm going to now just hop over here and begin this one. So I'm going to have a lot of those carry carryovers right here to cut afterward. And I should be wearing... What? It's a delay. It's called a delay. The Facebook delay. This is why I'm going to be filming the cell phone purse and, and uploading it separately. It won't be a live feed. How many of you are getting used to live videos having lags and sound issues? And just know it's it's always been a challenge, and it has some of it has nothing to do with us. It's the internet. Is, is the reason, you know, there's, this is data being sent over the internet live. Even the news, they have people on and they can't hear them and stuff. So people are getting used to. Um, yeah. And I think trying to figure out which time to go live is also a thing if it's too busy. 
So see how I just scoot it over? And here, you see how messy that flower is? It really doesn't look like a, I mean, it kind of looks like a flower, but until I put the thread on there, it's kind of messy. This makes it look more clean. How long have we been on? Almost an hour, because I feel like I shouldn't keep going if the sound is really bad. Does it sound really bad, you guys? Is anyone like going, oh, I cannot listen anymore? And then, uh, the lingerie thread, I need that. Yes, lingerie thread. Brenda, it's worth it. Not, not, um, oh, yeah. I don't have any ads on YouTube when I, uh, go live because I pay, I pay for YouTube Red and... So I forget about that, that you guys have commercials, but I appreciate you watching my, the commercials that play on my videos. It does help me stay in business. <laughs> this is the lingerie thread. This is it in black. And the difference between lingerie and polyester, well, there's a lot of differences, but they're almost identical polymers. There's just a few things different about them. The uh, nylon thread, while it, it, they say it doesn't stretch, it actually has memory built into it. They, that's why they call it memory yarn. That's why they called pantyhose memory yarn pantyhose in the day. Because they would, it, the thread stretches out and it goes back or it remembers where to go back to. So in my mind, that stretches, you know. But And the, and the fabric has memory too. It stretches and comes back. So there's no better thread to piece your quilt with than the lingerie thread. It's the strongest of all the threads for for piecing because it's it takes so long for it to break. It's also great for the bobbin as well. Now, when you look at nylon at nylon monofilament thread, it also has similar qualities to it. It stretches out and it comes back to its original shape. So, doesn't that mean stretch? To me, it means stretch. If you take a polyester monofilament and you stretch, it'll just snap. It breaks real easy. So it's not a good you should not be using the monofilament in polyester, also known as monopoly. Donna says, thanks for the awesome. You're awesome for saying I'm awesome, Donna. Oh, that's Donna. She's awesome. And Tina says, it's staticky, but we can still understand. Okay. You guys are so patient. So, so tie a knot, come over here. I want to do some blue. I'm, I'm getting... I'm getting blue from all the yellow. So are you guys sick and tired of me making masks videos? Because I have a new version of my mask. And this is it. It's a lot smaller. So it has this pretty little ring on the back. And what that does is it makes it so you don't have to put it over your head. And, uh, and I, use, I still do the continuous strip of elastic but you don't have to strap it over your head. So I'll be showing that in another video. And this is my night, my nighttime or evening mask that I'm gonna make in that video very soon. Should I give Michelle this mask because she doesn't have one made by me? Terry has lots of them. I'm done without, I'm done without masks. You're done with masks or without masks? I don't know, that sounds like you're saying both things. We have to wear the masks, but the mask design is the coolest. It also has our stick and tear stabilizer in it. So the air filter material so that you're actually filtering. Now I'm not going to talk about that too much because we all know that there's way too much controversy on the masks. All right, enough yellow. We are remember, do not cut your bobbin thread. Just raise the foot that's not really there. Pull the thread out. And this would be a good time to cut your threads, be a good quilter, and don't leave those distractions. Because if you end up going over there, then you'll have to, you'll be stitching along and you go, oh, there's a thread. And I'm just going to go over it and I'll cut it later. And then eventually you're, it's harder to cut teeny tiny little pieces. It's a lot easier to cut it when it's big. 
How many of you, thumbs up, are lazy on your tail cutting? And if you've ever gotten started out with a quilt that was square and ended up not square, don't do sad faces because that looks bad for Facebook. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you that you do kind of feel sad, don't you? If you start out with a square quilt and it ends up like this really weird shape. Why does that happen? Do any of you have any idea how your quilts start out square and end up oblong or deformed? <laughs> it's not even round. It's like it's bizarre. Okay. Should have been ready. There's this lady in my head. Look, I went live and she goes, don't you think you should be ready before you go live? <laughs> and I was like, I really try my best. I really do. This is a beautiful color here, and it doesn't have the label. That's not good. If your label pops off, write the number on the spool before you forget. Also, yesterday, one of the ladies has vision issues, and or I don't know what day. I've been live too many times this week. This is poster tack. And it's like this sticky, gooey, it's kind of like Play-Doh. But it's, even though it's sticky, it's not sticky. And so when you're using a, a needle, you stick it on the back and then you can take and stick this tack to your sewing machine. So you know what needle you're using. And a needle lasts about 10 to 13 hours of nonstop sewing. It doesn't wear out on the tip before the eye is worn out. You know your eye is worn out. Well, that sounds weird. But when you know your eye is worn out, when your thread starts, to shred a lot that's that's one tell about that but that's where the eye wears out or that's where the needle wears out first the eye of the needle and especially with polyester thread as polyester thread is more abrasive than others although polyester thread has come a long way and now it's super slippery so what did she say do you, can you tell me uh, uh, well, i can't read it can't stand strings. Um, right oh, good girl. Oh, what makes the fabric get all, all distorted is your hands like that and going like that to kind of flatten the fabric out while using a foot. And the foot taps on the fabric and makes little puckers. So this is it's your hand and the presser foot that causes the pucker. So when you use the octi hoops, because the bottom frame is beneath it, lifting the quilt up and floating over the bed of the machine, this is so slippery. My bobbin thread is still connected. So. These are so slippery that they slide like ice skates on ice. And that means your quilt is actually lifted up above the bed of the machine. And that is why you don't end up with puckers on the backside. And here's one that I quilted. And you can see no puckers at all. And this was not basted in any way. I didn't even use my basting glue. If you want to learn how to bind your quilt, this, this is another video that I have. And this is a mitered corner binding done all by machine. Not any part of this was done by hand, even the miter going down. I don't know if you can see how perfect that miter is. So if you haven't seen my binding video, it is on my YouTube channel. It's also inside of my school at create.clairowley.com. Also found at the top of creativefeet.com, the classes link. Okay, so this is kind of a blue and it kind of blends in with this. You can just outline just those circles and create a similar look to what I did on this quilt here, where I, I went with a light blue and I kind of just outlined, and this is just splatters. So I splatter the ink because you're gonna spill some ink, so you may as well spill it before you begin and make it part of your art. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around some of these splatters. Make sure that your foot, because there is no foot, make sure it's lowered. 
Those of you who have a Bernina, you won't even have this to help you see that the foot is up. So I call it the love pat. Give your machine the love pat. Make sure that that presser foot bar is down. And computerized machines won't let you sew with the foot up. So you're pretty much OK. And then we're going to go ahead. And all this time, I've had only one color bobbin because I have what underneath? I have batting underneath. So it doesn't matter. It's a lot more efficient. Ah, I should just hop over. All right, so it takes hours to quilt something like this. And it used to be that I would get sore and I couldn't keep going, but I don't get sore with the octahoops. Switch to the other camera. Realizing what you have gotten almost all on the on the top oh. Well, I'm glad that I've helped you. Need a you need, oh. need to find a quilt using oh. green I'm gonna teach that. So somebody came the people come up to me at shows and they go, sew this to that. <laughs> they have that attitude too. Like if anyone's gonna be able to do it, you're gonna be able to sew. Can you please and so they came up with minky binding and minky fabric. And they go, find that. And I go, okay. And I did it and it worked great. The same technique that you see in my binding, my how to bind your quilt with a by machine video on my YouTube channel. And you should be able to type Claire Rowley into the uh, YouTube search to find my channel. When you do, you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. There's a little bell icon. You click on the bell and then get all. That way you won't miss any live videos and also. So any uploads that I do, and I'm going to start doing a lot more uploads in between the live on Tuesdays at two Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> and that's forever going to be wrong because <laughs> videos are forever. <laughs> Darn, I made a mistake. This, this is a mistake day. I don't do as well when I have an audience in the room. No, I'm just kidding. So if you've ever seen me at a show before, you know that I never stop talking and people are always like, go to the bathroom. You have to go. <laughs> And uh, I don't really know why I said that. You could just be doing it all day long, never just rest. Yeah. So I want to just whip around and, and do some doodling, but uh, I'm trying to do a really good job of this. Is there any particular t type of quilting that you would like me to sh show you before for free motion before I bid you adieu for today? And the octi hoops are available at creativefeet.com. They are also sold on Amazon. And if you buy on Amazon, you're buying from me as well. So you can't hurt me by buying my product. If you buy it at a store, you're still buying it from me because I'm the manufacturer of the octi hoops and the inventor of it. So this will do that also. What? Oh, the mink. Uh, mink. Oh, the minky. Mm -hmm. I will. In fact, I'm going to show you how to embroider on minky. And how you embroider on minky. Do you see the cover-up package that was there? Yeah, Terry's right. Look at Terry doing her job. She knows her I stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is trending right now. This is how you embroider on towels and also minky. This is our cover-up. It's a vinyl and it comes in 16 different colors. And what you do is you, if you're going to use any shade of green on your thread, then you use green. And if you're going to use yellow threads, well, you use yellow. We have clear as well. But what you can do with this is you can, I don't know if you can reach that, Michelle, but I've never shown this before. It's up on, on, on top. It's nice to have somebody in here over to the left. Look for the bunny. That, yeah. So it's keys connected to a basket. This is a part two that I need to do for Easter. So maybe we can actually celebrate Easter next year. <laughs> There's all the all kinds of things. That's okay if something falls. Try to put it up. Yeah, because of the thread. There we go. Okay. This is Minky and his eyes I embroidered right over. The minky and the reason the thread is covering all of the fur 
is because I put white cover up over it before embroidering the eyes. This is free motion, by the way. And so if, if you if you haven't seen my, this is a casserole dish and you get, this is a free pattern or free, yeah, I think I, think I did a pattern. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and you can bring casseroles to people's houses and you put it inside and, and and it has a warmer in it so you can grab the lid with this little pot holder. And this is all done with the sequins and ribbon foot, the entire basket. And uh, so then I, I created the bunny to hold on to the basket. And I'm gonna, I, I don't know if you can see well. I'll, I'll go ahead and go, oops. Right now it's kind of wonky the way I have it attached. Mouse, I'll go close on the camera and you can see it. I'll do a little bit more show and tell, and then we'll end it. Can you tell I like spending time with you guys? And Lindsay's saying, wow, that would be awesome, and oh, cute. So this is done with the oxyhoops. They don't just do quilting. They're also for embroidery. And see how full coverage that is? And this is all done straight stitch even though that's a zigzag stitch that's a straight stitch i wish i brought the towel in now but i was trying to limit myself from going too long because i tend to go too long this was sewn on to this using the octi hoops as well is in the hoop this is how i sewed his little paw it's it's embroidery in the hoop just like the embroidery machines do. They have in the hoop projects. So there'll be in the hoop projects for your Octi hoops coming up soon. And this, so you see how the, the Easter eggs are, are yarn stitched on the outside. And it is a great way to learn how to use the sequins and ribbon foot. And isn't he cute? He's Grandpa, Grandpa Bunny. I think I should end. All right. Says I'm sending my lunch for next week. Uh -huh. Thinking you're two hours behind. Yeah, and so we're, it's three twenty one now. And we don't change time, so Mountain Standard Time is we never change, but you guys do. So then we're like, what time is it in New York? I don't know. What time of year is it? And it gets so so people are always like, oh, you're so lucky. Your time doesn't change, but it's like having a time change all year because we never know what time it is anywhere. And when California is earlier than me, I get I get really confused with that one. So if we go on at two here, it's one in California and three in New York. And you can type it in, into your search engine. Just type in what time is it in Arizona? And it'll come up so that you can uh, know no matter what time. And I always like talk about it in, in Side of the school and, and in my newsletter and and uh, do my best to let you guys know when I'm going live beforehand and I give you instructions but you actually have to read those you know yeah right now it is 322 it might have gone. and it is December 3rd of 2020 we are almost through 2020. <laughs> and we're going to go out having a lot of fun. So let's see, where is this? And we're going to say goodbye to you guys. We'll pull you up. You're on. Hi. I've unmuted you, or I'm trying to. Yeah, unmute yourself and then go ahead and you can say bye. And Terry, you're like oh, yeah. off screen. <laughs> bye everyone. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Remember, not Tuesdays, but Thursdays at two. Live every Thursday at two here. YouTube on my Facebook page, um, which is not my personal page, but Facebook group and our Creative Feet fan page. And and when I go live, I generally give something away. Today, we're giving away a presser. In order to have 
be considered one of the winners, you have had to have shared the episode that was on today. Now, I don't know if you share inside of YouTube. So the more activity comments that you did, the better your chances are. And that's kind of how we do it. So the more you impact our feed, the more we want to give you something. And I love you all so much. So I will see you next time. Bye. Mwah. And I always do that before I have my hand on the button. So I guess I'll, I'll kiss you all again. So bye.